Today, I want to speak to you about inflammation, cholesterol, and a 30-year cardiovascular risk in, in women, and a new study that was just from the New England Journal of Medicine released at the end of August. So let me pull up my notes, and we'll talk about the specific things you should be looking at, asking your doctor for, and then what are some of the strategies you can actually incorporate yourself to combat these things. So all right, let me jump right over here. So first of all, you know, I'm super excited about today's live session because, again, we're discussing a groundbreaking new study um, basically on the long-term cardiovascular risk in women, right? The study we're talking about today was led by Dr. Paul Ridker and his team where they followed nearly 28,000 healthy U.S. women over 30 years, oh my goodness, um, to understand three key biomarkers, right? So this is high sensitivity CRP or HSCRP. LDL cholesterol, it's your bad cholesterol, and LP little a, or the lipoprotein little a, okay? So these basically predict cardiovascular events such as heart attacks, strokes, and deaths due to heart disease. So what are the main points of the studies? Well, first of all, why does the study matter? We know that CRP and LDL cholesterol and LP little a are important for predicting five and 10 year cardiovascular risk. However, this study takes things further by looking at how these markers predict 30 year cardiovascular outcomes. Now this longer term perspective is really, really important because it can guide earlier interventions to reduce cardiovascular risk. So let's talk about the study overview, right? So the study included 27,939 initially healthy women. That's the important piece here with an average age of 54.7 years. That is literally, these are my people. I'll be 54 next month. Um, and they were 54.7 at the, at the start. So over 30 years, they tracked um, the first major cardiovascular events such as heart attacks, strokes, or cardiovascular deaths, and then linked them back to the baseline levels of those three biomarkers, okay? So the key findings, one, um, the high sensitivity CRP. Inflammation as measured by HSCRP showed the highest impact, okay? So women in the top quintile of CRP levels had a 70% higher risk of cardiovascular events over 30 years compared to those in the lowest quintile. Next is the LDL cholesterol. So high LDL cholesterol was also predicted with a 36% higher risk of events in the top quintile. And then you have your LP little a. Now elevated levels of this, you know, it is a lesser known marker, were linked to a 33% higher risk in the top quintile. And this shows that lipoprotein um, A is emerging as a really important, but it's often overlooked factor in your cardiovascular health. So number four important piece of this study is that, you know, interestingly, each of these biomarkers, the HSCRP, the LDA, and the LPLA was an independent predictor of cardiovascular events, right? So the study found that risk prediction was strongest when all three were considered together. That just provides a more comprehensive risk assessment risk assessment. So it's really important to understand each one of these had their own, they were each independent players. Um, so what is the implication for prevention? The study really emphasizes the need to move beyond traditional kind of short-term risk uh, predictions and consider the long-term strategies for heart health. For women, especially those with high inflammation or cholesterol levels, early interventions significantly reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases over a lifetime. So the key takeaway is you need to ask your doctor for an HSCRP. Your lipid panel should already have your LDL. And then ask for at least once in your lifetime. Again, this is a genetic factor, the LP little a. Um, again, because this can predict their, your cardiovascular risk, not just for the next decade, for, but for the next 30 years. So what are the three things I'd encourage you to, to consider that I've seen those other receptors that we can control really make a big difference? That's adopt an anti-inflammatory diet, right? Why? Well, since HSCRP is a key marker of inflammation and a major predictor of cardiovascular risk, reducing inflammation through diet is absolutely critical and it's huge, right? So what do you do? You focus on a diet that's rich in anti-inflammatory foods, like your fruits and veggies, which I talk about all the time, right? These are awesome. They're high in antioxidants and that combats inflammation. You have healthy fats, including omega-3, uh, rich nuts and seeds. You have whole grains. Choose those fiber-rich ones like to really improve your cholesterol. Those We are fiber deficient in this country. Fiber is so important for gut health, which also is a big player in your overall systemic inflammation. 
and then limit the processed foods, those ultra franken foods, right? Refined sugars and trans fats. Although in the United States, trans fats have been banned, at least in ultra processed foods, because those will increase inflammation and LDL cholesterol. I would say also your saturated fats. Um, then number two is exercise regularly, right? So exercise will help lower your LDL cholesterol and your inflammation levels. Um, again, it's just overall for your heart health as well. What to do? You want to aim for around 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise. And what does that look like? Well, that's walking, cycling, swimming, where you're getting your heart rate up. It's like takes a second to finish a sentence, right? So that's the, the type of um, uh, pr pressure you want to put on yourself, right? Is to put yourself out there, move the body to a point that you're just having a little difficulty. Maybe you have to take a breath or two to finish that sentence, right? Um, next would be strength training, making sure you're adding in that strength training at least two to three times per week. I would also indicate for women in menopause or perimenopause, mobility training is really, really important. I'll be talking more about mobility training later as there is a syndrome, the menopause, uh, kind of the, with menopause, you get joint discomfort. And I think mobility training could be very, very beneficial for women in that category. So strength training, cardiovascular fitness, so very important. Next, I would, you know, really talk to your doctor about your risk factors for the LP little a. Um, again, it's an independent genetic factor that can increase your cardiovascular risk. And while it's not well known as, as the LDL, um, it does require some monitoring. Um, it doesn't really respond with diet or exercise, but there are things that are coming out. Again, the more important factor here is if you do have elevated LP little a, you really wanna control these other factors. And so that is it for today. I just wanted to jump in here and share that with you. Um, I hope you found that helpful. And by the way, if you like more of this, please click below. There's a link to join my newsletter. I send out stuff like this every single Tuesday. I would love to have you here uh, and try to be very respectful of your email, your uh, inbox. I, I know that you probably are inundated, but again, I'd love to have you as part of the family here. And as always, I'm sending gratitude, joy, love, and peace um, and healing to you and your loved ones And because we all need more of that in our lives. So thanks, everyone. I really appreciate you showing up as always. Take care.